we're going to talk about another god very dear to my heart today, and that is Loki, who is probably the single most controversial god in the northern pantheon. Loki's been good to me. I've said it before and I'll say it again, that every good thing in my life in some way has flowed through his hands, up to and including my relationship with Odin. I honor Loki because I love him, for no other reason. So when did Loki first come into your life? Before Odin, surprisingly. Um, I would say 93, 94. There he was. And he's very difficult to ignore. And I was very, very fortunate because while I had read the Eddas, I really didn't have any preconceptions about Loki or any of the other gods for that matter. And that really allowed the relationship to develop without any external burden. And I think that that was very, very important. I mean, I was able to go into it clean. Because Loki, if the only opening that you're going to give him is as a malicious trickster, he'll take that opening. Why not? But it's so much better when you can meet him halfway and meet him with respect and devotion. He has so much more to give. So Loki, and Loki worship is extremely uh, controversial in many communities. And how do you feel about that and what do you think needs to be done around that area? I think that it's misguided. I don't think that it is for us to determine which gods are worthy of worship. They are gods. We are not. I don't think that it is our portion to involve ourselves in the politics of the gods. I don't think we have the understanding to do so. I think our portion is to honor them. Period. So for me, I think it's very misguided to block Loki or any other deity out of one's worship. I've had people express surprise that I would honor Skadi or Heimdall because in the lore they have a rather conflicted and hostile relationship with Loki and of course I'll honor them. They are part of, they are the holy powers. I'll honor all of them. Loki, however, is special and if a deity comes to you and you begin to develop a devotional relationship and you begin to love that deity and that deity blesses you and transforms your life Loki gave me my God. He gave me Odin. He gave me a mother. He gave me a stable household. He gave me stable employment. He protected my health. He made me emotionally sound. I am here because of Loki. Why would I ever turn my back on that because it offends human sensibilities? Really? I think that our portion is to honor the gods. Our portion is not to judge them. So what are the different faces of Loki? Like Odin, he's got a lot of different aspects. I mostly deal with Loki as husband of Segan, and he is very gentle and loving and supportive. There is Loki the magician, the trickster. There is breaker of worlds, the god who went mad from having his son slaughtered in front of him, his other son driven mad and driven away, from being chained in a cave for speaking the truth. That Loki's not so easy to deal with. I think that each deity, not just Loki and Odin, ha each deity has many different paths by which a person can reach them, connect to them, honor them, and I have great respect for those whose portion is to connect to Loki as breaker of worlds. That is perhaps his most difficult path. At least I find it so, but for me, nine times out of ten he comes as the husband of Segan, and he is very gentle, with a wry wit, but extremely supportive, provided provided I own my own emotional garbage and I make no excuses for what I do or do not do in his presence. 
despite his reputation for being the father of lies, he demands an intense amount of honesty from his devotees. A lot of people who work with Loki have said that he's very, he has very strong ties to his family. And if you work with him sooner or later, you end up working with some part of, of his various family as well, or at least getting to meet them and honor them, because they mean a lot to him. And we may not think of that as, a, as something a trickster god would, would be important, would find important. How do you feel about that? To some degree, I, I found that to be true with most of the northern gods. It's very much a family religion. And you don't, it's almost as though you don't just get to honor this deity, but sooner or later as the relationship develops, you're going to be introduced to the wife, the son, the stepson, the brother. I mean, it's a very much a family religion. It's a tribal religion. Loki, even pretty much more than any other northern god that I've encountered, though, is an incredibly loving father. He loves his children. He loves his wives. He loves his family and cherishes those connections. And even more than, than, say, Odin or Thor or Freya, I found that for Loki, it very early on is very important that someone who is in relationship with him also develop a relationship with Sigyn, with Angerbotha, with Narvi, with Vali, with Hela, with his other children. And also with Odin. Loki and Odin play off each other quite a bit, more than one might think. Those people, those people, those deities that are important to him, slowly someone who is really in right relationship with Loki, you'll be introduced to them. I don't, can't say what that relationship will entail, that's a very individual thing. But he is very much about it, it, introducing you to the family. It's a family thing. Are there people who shouldn't try to interact with Loki, or perhaps there are some dangers for some people? Well, I found that the gods are opportunists, Loki and Odin especially. If the only way that you can possibly conceive of Loki in your heart of hearts is as a dangerous, demonic presence, I would perhaps wait a bit before interacting with him, because if that's the only opening you can give him, that's the opening that he'll take. If you are incapable of treating a deity with respect, then you should not be in the presence of that deity. <laughs>